and what a fantastic place to spend a bit of time over in New Zealand with the new Stalker Legend 25 year series fly rod. I've got the fast six weight, it's ideal for this sort of water when you're dealing with pretty big fish. And this is an outstanding specimen, just on five pound, absolute beauty. And uh, that's what you're, you're dealing with, with a lovely six weight, great fish to be catching with the Stalker Legend. Funny how a day pans out. <laughs> G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. Today we're in the, the Ariti River which is, uh, we're about 25 minutes below Lumsden in Southland in New Zealand. It's an amazing fishery that has some really big fish through it. We're in probably the middle sections, um, it's really highly fished higher up uh, where you tend to get some bigger fish but there's loads of fish all through these lower sections and much less people around. We're fishing, well our idea today is below these willows, there seems to be a lot of fish here and they'll be on the willow grubs. We're uh, getting towards the end of January and it's a great time of year to be over in New Zealand for these willow grub feeders. They'll go through, sometimes they'll start in December, run through January, even into February and a little bit later, but now's the prime time. You can also, this time of year, in January and February, get into cicadas. So uh, if dry fly fishing is something that you're really into, now's a great time of year to be getting over here. But uh, let's uh, see if I can't put this willow grub in front of a couple of these fish and see if we can't uh, get a bit of a closer look at them. They'll be right on their nose too with a lot of these feeders. This one should drift down, hopefully. Oh, and he took it. On the other side. Oh. The two strikes. Third strike, I've got to go home. So we've got to make sure we make this next one count. And we've had a few casts and refusals, but I'll come straight up to that fly and then turn away. Um, sometimes that can certainly be that the tippet is too thick. This water is pretty low, pretty clear, uh, and they've got a little bit of time to see it uh, at the back of these willows. So potentially it could be the tippet, which um, to them it, it might look like a bit of rope hanging off a little willow grub, which is unnatural. So I've gone down uh, to a 6x, which is pretty fine, um, but that may make the difference where it just sits a little bit more natural in the film. So I'll give that one a go and hopefully this fish, because they're still feeding, will take my fly, eventually. There we go, oh, nice one. Oh, coming back towards me. But that was interesting, we had quite a few casts and, uh, yeah, literally rejections. And I'm not very good with rejection, but um, eventually it was that persistence and I, I guess you're just putting it up there often enough that they think it must be natural. You know, there might be a hatch of that particular thing coming down and took it. Not, not a huge fish, but still, I don't know, two, two and a half pounds, which is still great. In, on a dry fly in this crystal clear water, it's fantastic. So it's uh, good just to uh, get that take as you put that fly up there. And he didn't take the willow grub that time. I've got two flies. I tend to use a willow grub sometimes might even sink um, or it's hard to notice where it is in some water. So I quite often have uh, a little dry fly and a merger pattern with a white tuft so I can see where hey, that fly is all the time and also where the uh, willow grub is as well. So you can keep a track of it. And he's taken that one, but yeah, great little fish. Sometimes even these smaller ones will give you plenty of fight too rather than the, uh, even the bigger ones. Good. Get 
that net eventually. Here we go. And get him into it. Good to finally get one in the net. And a good start too, to get a lovely fish like that on your dry fly. Quickly get him out and give you a quick look and get him back in, particularly when it's a bit warm. Uh, but a lovely little fish, great nick, plenty of food around here. And he's, he'll be good to go straight away. Just hold him up, current. Oh, perfect. Good start. Plenty more of those and hopefully get his uh, bigger brother and sister and mother. Come right out. Oh! That wasn't supposed to happen. Sometimes if they're coming towards you, you've got to wait until they get it, close their mouth and turn down, which is pretty hard when you're all excited because you know he's got it and you strike and whatever. If, if they're facing upwards, you can sort of strike straight away, but Every now and then you've got to remind yourself when he's facing you, just wait that extra second for him to grab it, turn down, and uh, then you'll hook him. Yeah, I must remember that next time. Now sometimes you'll see these fish as you're walking along, and it will look exactly like that, that light um, fawny colour, and that's him sitting just under the surface waiting for the plop of a, a, a willow grub, and he'll shoot over and get it. At other times you might just be like there's one over the back, you're just feeding pretty um, regularly and he'll dart around um, looking for the actual shape of the willow grub, hear the plop and he's very aggressive towards it as well. So sometimes when you're chasing willow grubs it's um, pretty exciting sort of fishing and very visual. So it's a, it's a great time to be over here at this time of year. come up to a lovely little backwater and backwaters on on all these rivers are outstanding um, when they've got a bit of depth a lot of this tree cover which is a lot of food as well and I can hear I can't always see them but I, you can hear as they they sip these willow grubs off the top they're quite a splashy sort of uh, a noise and you can hear them so you know one's in there and every now and then you'll see a little bit of a ripple come across I'll give you an idea of where he is, but I'm just waiting for him to come out somewhere where I can see him and put that uh, willow grub fly in front of him. Just got to be a little bit more patient in, in backwaters like this because they will move around and uh, literally come out of nowhere. We've probably spent about 20, 30 minutes in here waiting for him to come out, waiting for it to put it in the right place and the right fly and you just see him coming and then, uh, yeah, takes it. It just didn't stick, but that's, right. that's why it's called uh, fishing and not catching, I guess. Cool. And that's the difference. Oh, beautiful. Uh, spent a fair bit of time on these ones in here and they look at the fly. Ooh. Oh, mate. Well, I've got to stop him from getting into those willows, but at the same time, let him have a little bit of line so uh, when he needs it. But we need to make use of the rod as well. We try and keep it on, on that angle so it can look after the tippets a little bit better because we have to go down tippet size so that they eat it. And then this one. Uh, once you first saw it, he thought it was great, which is good. 
Much more fun when they stay on the end of your, uh, your hook than straight out. Beautiful. Let's get him in. Probably dark fish. And quite often a lot of these ones from the, um, the backwaters stay very dark. A little bit of tannin in the water. Finally good to get one in the net and a lovely little fish there. I'll just, uh, I might bring him across to a little bit of deeper water just to uh, be a little bit cooler. And we try not to muck around too much, but it's on a warm day as well. So uh, let's see if I can get this, this hook out pretty quickly and send him on his way. Good little tool, little catch and release. Gets that fly out much easier. Now I'll just quickly, do it quickly and send him on his way. Get back into some of that cool water. The lovely little he's easy three and a half pound. Beautiful fish, lovely dark colours. And uh, yeah, he's good to go. That's good. That's fantastic. So that's uh, interesting. You know, like we, we're a little backwater. It's only pretty tiny. We've put our fly. They've seen it, seen it, seen it, won't eat it. Seen it, seen it, seen it, won't eat it. And then one took it. And then this one first go. As soon as you heard that plop straight over to it and whack. Yeah, so they're all a bit different, which makes... I suppose fly fishing so enjoyable because you're, you're always going to come across something that's different. You know, it's never going to be the same. Um, yeah, and it keeps you on uh, on your toes to try and think of something else to do or or how to um, present your fly in a different way to get them to take it. But uh, it's pretty handy when that works. It's good. So hopefully we'll find another one. Now I always use a net when I'm fly fishing. You have a few different options from a nice uh, stained traditional timber one is obviously ideal. Nice soft mesh, uh, really looks after the fish to what I tend to use a lot of the time is the McLean's net, which is a lovely aluminium net made in New Zealand, very strong. A few different sizes from your smaller Aussie size up to your larger New Zealand size for a lot bigger fish and what I tend to prefer, a longer handle. The beauty of the McLean's way net is that it actually has scales in the bottom of it. So you don't have to guess at how much that fish actually weighs. Put it in there and it weighs uh, pretty accurately. So um, it will reduce the size of the stories that you tell, but you'll know exactly how much it weighed. Beauty. Nice one. We're just walking up this uh, sort of a little offshoot, and I could see this fish tear up the side of the bank to uh, try and get something. And we've swapped. Ooh, got a little bit more go down deep there. We've swapped to a nymph. Obviously, no uh, willows and things like that down this way. So we've uh, just thrown a nymph under that dry, and that certainly worked on that one. He. Uh, he took that fly like an oating money. And it's just a wonderful day to walk up a valley like this. You know, um, and today's a Sunday, Sunday. And uh, yeah, you just wouldn't see a soul around. Some of these places you get to are just fantastic. And you literally have them all to yourself. So it's a wonderful way to spend a bit of time over in New Zealand. Just get down here and uh, see if we can't net him. Lovely brown colours. The browns came from uh, Tasmania. A couple of years ago, uh, Tasmania had its 150th anniversary of trout from England. And uh, just this year is New Zealand's 150th anniversary. And they came from Tasmania itself as well. Great fish. In Eureka, you can get some really big fish. Generally the, the rivers that flow into the, the ocean um, has large fish, you know, like large over 10 pounds. Uh, and this flows all the way down there. They'll go out from time to time and eat white bait, really bulk up. And, uh, and then come back up here to spawn and some of the larger males stay. Just 
still good to catch even three and four pounders. That's still great fun as well. We've nearly got him in. Yeah, mate. That's good. Lovely little fish there. So that's good. Uh, it just pays to be aware, even you know, if you're walking up somewhere, you see something, whether it be a rise, something out of the ordinary, pay attention because it could well be a fish, and that next cast could well have this on the end of your rod. Yep, there you go. That was good. We had a few casts there, and he looked at that fly, but not eaten it. And then uh, maybe I think with nymphs as well, they can be in, in different slots, and that might be going to the left or the right of him or wherever, and he just doesn't see it properly. But uh, oh, nice one. And then eventually you get one online. Yeah, good. And uh, he realises that's what he wants to eat, which is fantastic. Got a little bit of going in. That's it. You just want a reel that's going to do all the work for you. Take your hands away from that line, galvan reel, just purrs when it needs to. And I do find that the, the shorter the line you have, the much easier it is to manoeuvre. So you can steer these fish around a lot. And if I want to go, there's literally like you know, like a horse, if you do want to go that way, you'll, you'll turn the rod that way and downstream pulling that way and the fish will go in that direction as well but uh, nearly got him in now. Nearly, no, just doesn't want to give in just yet. Come on mate. This is the time, we don't want to panic either. We've got light tippet. And when he wants to go, you just got to let him go. No, no. And we've got him facing up the stream. He turned his head. Get him in the net, beautiful. Well, there you go. Not a bad workout. Lovely brown trout. He's easy, three and a half pound. Just, just incredible fishing that you can have in this area. Uh, you just never get tired of it, never get tired of it. It's important that you keep the fish in the water as long as possible, actually he's, well, he's probably actually four pounds. Uh, no wonder a little bit more going in, but just the, the depth on that is fantastic. Lovely thick back, and he's actually good to go straight away. So um, you don't want to keep him out of the water very long at all. We just um, get your photo, get everything ready, get your photo, put him back in, let him go on his way and let somebody else try and catch him next time. So, beautiful fish from the Aridi River. Just got one, some of the willows up here, or got two actually, but you catch one one at a time. Just go over and get it. Can you see it? We'll go up to the top one, which is willow grub. Here we go. Surely somebody should have told me to when the fish is facing you downstream to wait before you strike. Mm. Doesn't matter. Oh, good one. Nice. I could see a couple of fish uh, cruising around uh, and it looked like they were, well, they're apprehensive. They're moving relatively quickly. But yeah, sometimes I'm sure they just forget why they're, they're swimming so fast and put it in front of him that had that nymph on that time. And sure enough, the uh, a dry fly indicator went under. There's a fish on the end, which is terrific. 
And the water, I think it is just so clear, which makes it just so enjoyable to be catching fish, A, in this part of the world, but in an environment like this, where I can see that fish and I can tell you he'll be two and three quarter pound. There's one right behind it that might uh, be hard to see. He's a little bit bigger. Um, there's fish literally all over the place. This, if, if somebody could create a place for trout to live, they'd create New Zealand. Absolutely incredible. Right, pretty good here. Not a, not a huge fish. But, as someone once said to me, all fish are good fish. Come on, mate. Beautiful. Excellent. That little brown, perfect. Certainly breaks the monotony of pulling the, uh, the fly out of a fish's mouth too, having one uh, stay attached. A little brown, and uh, he'll be good to go straight away. Beautiful little fish. Good on you, mate. And that's what it certainly can be like, chasing brown trout like that in a river like this is just incredible. Great fun, great fun. And you just, just never get tired of it, you know? So, uh, yeah, if you get the chance to, to come over to uh, New Zealand on either one of our trips or you come over on a family holiday or just a fishing holiday, it's an amazing place that you've really got to experience because it's literally got everything. You've got wonderful rivers, incredible lakes, incredible fish that you're going to come across and it's going to be something you're going to well probably do every year after a while but uh, it's something you're really going to appreciate and, and really love good beautiful i could uh oh nice very dark fish this one that you'll see in a sec and that's from living underneath a lot of this cover and quite often a bigger older fish will get a little bit darker as well and he was over there taking dries, and they could well have been uh, willow grubs, you know, just on the top there. But I had the, uh, the nymph still attached on this one, plonked it out, and sometimes you're not gonna be able to see any movement in that um, your dry fly indicator either. So you're just gonna be mindful of that. But I could see everyone will talk about, they saw the trout wink, and you go, well, good on you. They're pretty clever if they can see uh, his eyelids close. But well, what that means is you'll see the inside of his mouth is white and you'll see it go like from dark to go bang, a flash of white. And that's what they call the trout winked at him so that you set the hook and away you go and you look like you know what you're doing, which is you know, what all this fly fishing cake is all about, really about bluff and just pretending you know what you're doing. But he's a, a lovely fish, an older, an older one at that, but uh, still got a bit of go on him as well. So that's uh, all pretty cool. It's just incredible. I just, I just, I can't get over how good New Zealand is. Fishing is literally world class, and uh, lucky enough to have fished in some pretty cool places around the world. But New Zealand, hands down, beats them all. Beats them all. And pretty cool people around too. So uh, great place to spend a bit of time. Great for little kids and big kids. And here we go. Come on, matey. Beautiful. That's a lovely fish. And you can see just the dark back of that fish. And that's from living in, in a backwater or you know, in amongst some of the, the darker waters. And he'll blend in. Um, and it takes a, a KGL fly fisherman to see him and catch him. So that's uh, worked out pretty good. Pretty good. Stunning fish, stunning fish. Whoa, hang on. Beautiful, lovely dark colour, lovely big head on him. And a great fish. Get him back in. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode on the Aridi River. You don't have to always run right up to the headwaters to have a great time on the Aridi. The mid, lower, it's just literally full of browns and it's a great way to spend a bit of time without the crowds. And next time you look at a willow, you'll uh, have a different appreciation for them as well because once you tie on that willow grub, who knows what you can get. Anyway, that's all we've got time for and I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I look forward to catching you on the fly. <laughs>